Your Steve Jones Show podcast is loading now. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Sunbury Motors, North 4th Street in Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. The great Tony Knopp joins us, my good friend. It is so good to have you back. Hey, no uh, no slander to the Rivercats. Sacramento probably has, is outdrawing Oakland. No, exactly. No, they, That AAA Park sold draw. out every game. I mean, they draw, what, ten to 14,000 every game, don't they? They really do. They really do. It's, it's amazing. Uh, yeah, it's almost like uh, we've seen this before. You know, you have an owner that has a dilapidated stadium that's trying to not draw fans so they can move it to another city. We just need somebody to come out of the California penitentiary system throwing the ball 99 miles an hour and uh, bring him back like we saw in Major League. <laughs> We've got all the things in place right now for the A's to become the Major League team. <laughs> Where were you the last like, California Penal League? California Penal League. I feel like a banker in this. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Well, uh, Tony, let's start. The Big Ten is getting closer to getting its TV contract set. I think idealistically a lot of people thought it might be done by June 5th, which is when the Big Ten presidents and chancellors meet. So we'll see if that Mm -hmm. timetable holds. So let's get to the streaming part, because the Big Ten has met with NBC, CBS, ESPN, Fox, obviously, and they're helping with with this. Yeah, Fox is in the Uh, room. I mean, for the listeners who don't know, that's – a very unique situation where they're negotiating with these major players, and Fox is on the same side of the table as the Big Ten is. Right, and that's you know, and remember, Fox also owns fifty-one percent of the Big Ten yep. network. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, Turner has has also presented, but so has Apple and mm-hmm. Amazon. Yep. So, Tony, what's your read on the possibility that at least some package, even if it's a small one? ends up being a streamed package for the Big Ten based on what the NFL did with Amazon? I think it's a near certainty. Just based on the conversations that they're having with the different leagues, based on what Apple did with Major League Baseball, what Amazon did with the NFL, what they've begun to chase when it comes to live events, and then tying those things to unique content that they can have available. You know, following the F1 drive drive to survive uh, roadmap, um, again, we talk a lot of soccer, international soccer, when I'm on yes. here. That's something that's been wildly successful uh, for the media companies in Europe, has been to have the live event piece and then to tie it to the documentary piece that goes along with it. There's an Arsenal documentary this year. There was When Eagles Fly, when Crystal Palace came back a couple of years ago. There was, you know, the Liverpool documentary. I think it's a near certainty as they create this content and tie it together that it ties across their technology. And so everybody's been kind of afraid that Apple's going to do this for a long time. It's been a certainty that Amazon's going to do it, but Apple's tipped their hand now and they're in there, and we all and we all see it. So I think it's a near certainty that the Big Ten and then eventually the SEC will do a deal with, with the major streamers. All right, so let, let's get into that, that part of it, the streaming part of it, because obviously, you know, as you mentioned, Apple's in with Major League Baseball. People are not enamored with the presentation, but they're in it. We'll see what Amazon wants to do. They were able to get Herb Street and uh, Al Michaels. Mm-hmm. That helps. And some uh, marquee games. Like they're, they're, they've mar- got some games yes. that are going to draw a good viewership. Yes, they've got they exactly have that. The question is, how do you think it would work on the collegiate level as opposed to the NFL or MLB level? Do you think it would have a level of attraction to have a streaming package? I think it does, and and here's why. It's You know, whenever you talk to the media companies or the brands, and we're in the room for a lot of these things, you're talking about reach. You're talking about how do I expand growth opportunities outside of urban centers and into markets that may be more difficult because they're less centralized to get um, exposure into. And that's college football. Right, what college football really has going for it. You have all these conversations about the USFL and the XFL trying to bring, you know, minor league football into smaller cities that can support it. And the same model we were just talking about with the Sacramento River Cats, you know, the Grand Rapids White Caps, you know, teams like that in minor leagues who are exploding and supporting these teams. You already have that infrastructure in place with college football where you have major uh media presences in cities that are not 
you know, first tier cities, so to speak, when it comes to population centers and the like. And so I actually am surprised, you know, I think we talked about this a couple of years ago, that Major League Baseball came before college football just because of the the tribal nature that is college football. And you know, the ratings on college football, as we talked about last time, are so over the top that even when a, a casual fan looks at it and says, wait, when they brought over, when, when they basically poached the best, one of the best or most popular play-by-play people, all they traded was one game, which we talked about at the Ohio State game, right? right? Right. That's how valuable that game is. They literally let him out of his contract for an entire year in exchange for one college football game. Right. But it's Ohio State Notre Dame. It's Ohio State, yeah. We all knew what game it was going to be immediately. Right. Right. Yeah, we knew right away which game it was going to be, but that tells you the value of it. 100%. Uh, All right. So now the Big Ten, which is going to end up on multiple platforms in all likelihood, the next one that negotiates is going to be the Pac-12. So, Tony, let's talk about financial separation. This contract... Uh, now, with this contract, everyone keeps saying it's going to double what the Big Ten's getting now. It's not going to. You and I know that. But it's going to be a substantial increase. I think that's fair. Yes. Uh, all right. So the SEC is going to have its contract with streaming mm-hmm. being a possibility after that. The Big Ten's going to have its contract. So it's those two, and then it's the next three, Big 12, mm-hmm. ACC, Pac-12. Mm-hmm. What do you think that financial separation does to the game? Because the financial separation is not slight. It's going to be a chasm. It's, it's already significant. It's already, I think last I looked, $82 million versus $36 million on an annual basis between the middle-of-the-road teams from the, from the Big Ten and the Pac-12. That's significant when you're talking about the highest-paid head coach in college football makes 10. Right, yeah. you can hire three right. Lincoln Rileys and still have more money when you're, you know, a middle of the road Big Ten team, as opposed to when you're Colorado or let, let, Utah. Let, let or... me phrase it. Let, let me phrase it to everybody this way: When this TV deal is over with, Rutgers will be getting exponentially more TV and bowl money than USC. Exponentially more, three times more, at least. Yeah. I mean, they're currently getting more than two times more. So it's going to be outrageous. And the concern that they have is how does that money flow through the organization and then how do the collectives change predicated upon what the media deals look like, right? Because if you're, if you're the Pac-12 right now or if you're the ACC and you're a team in one of those conferences, you're in a tough spot because the Big Ten has kind of been the pioneers of this whole thing. They did their first deal, and everybody copied it. And that's what's happening here again, too. They're going to bring streaming in. The SEC is going to pay attention to exactly what the Big Ten does and then probably do something very similar to it, try to get more money out of ESPN when they do. So if you're looking you know, at a black hole, if you're USC, if you're Florida State, if you're Miami, if you're Clemson, you know, you've got to find a way – to get enough enough interest in your team so that you don't turn into the Tennessee Volunteers, right, where you were once a national draw and now you can't get a primetime spot unless you're playing SEC football on the road at Auburn or Alabama, right? So the concern that people have is that it's going to create super leagues and they're just going to break away from the NCAA. In the end, the Big Ten and SEC are just going to say, we don't need the NCAA anymore. We can negotiate our own deals. The college football playoff is a place where we can all come together and and pool a little bit more money, and we'll just create super conferences and hopefully poach people to those, the same way Texas and Oklahoma got poached to the SEC. Right. Well, all right. So so the Big Ten and SEC. Change is good. You and I, you know, we're older guys. We're like, ah, I kind of like the way it was. But the way it was wasn't like this either. I mean, you look at – who has the most national titles in college football history? You know, Army's up there. When was the last yeah. time Army competed? Yeah, exactly. I mean, Pitt's got, like, they claim a billion, even though most of them are manufactured. <laughs> um, I mean, a lot of them are. It's like, hey, Dunkel says we're first. Good. I'm happy for you. Good. Got it. National uh, title. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, like UCF. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they have it up on the, right up in the uh, press box. The... All right, so we're talking about the financial separation, which has already happened. But I want to bring in the George Klyovkov factor. The Pac-12 mm-hmm. is not going – they'll be the next one to negotiate. Yep. They're not going to get anywhere near what the Big Ten is going to be. But what kind of uh, chance does Klyovkov give the Pac-12? Because he does have the ability to negotiate at least a decent one. Is that fair? 
it's there. George is incredibly intelligent. We worked with him when he was at MGM. Uh, always, always thinking forward, and he's he's playing the game two years from now as opposed to now. He understands the importance of data. He understands the importance of gaming coming into it. He was talking about bowl games getting sponsors from gaming and you know beer companies long before that became something that the NCAA released, which is a couple of months ago. So he sees it. I think you know the rumor on the street that I'm hearing is they're not going to do a long-term deal because they know that they're in a weak spot right now. They need, I mean. You know, I'm a graduate of USC, so everybody's going to take this and sigh and roll their eyes because everybody hates SC, and maybe they should. But they really desperately need Lincoln Riley to make waves at SC this year. Oh and no, what they need no, to that, do that's is, absolutely right. You are right? that. That is not. That is just. Look, you need fl- your flagships to be really good. Right. And in the Pac-12, USC is the flagship. So if you're George Klyavkov and you're looking at this, you're saying, okay, I'm essentially. You know, he picked up a really tough situation coming in after Larry, who, you know, was kind of a joke. And I think he's looking at this like a star athlete saying, put me on a short-term contract and I'm going to play for the Supermax in two to three years. And that's how the Pac-12 is kind of represented right now. They know they have the Rose Bowl going to be back on the national stage again. They know they have USC playing LSU in Vegas uh, next year, not this coming year. They know they've got that national uh, prominence, and that's what they're looking for. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is a shorter-term deal than what we see yeah. with the other with the other leagues. Yeah, because I think the big I think the Big Twelve gets less. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. They, yeah, they just and, lost and, their two. They just lost right. the two biggest draws. The the Big right. Twelve is in the Big Twelve. The ACC are in real trouble. The AAC is on the way up. Right. The AAC has kind of filled that void. Right. They've decided, look, we don't need to be a superpower, but there's enough fan base, and we can pick up some healthy organizations along the way. That's what they're doing. And there's a bunch of lawsuits for the listeners who aren't paying attention to it about teams leaving and coming back and, you know, how the AAC is just aggressively poaching teams. But I totally agree with you. I think the Big 12 is is in a death spiral. Right. I I think that, you know, because I saw a projection chart, and it would show the Big 12 going up, 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 and I'm thinking, they're not going up. I mean, they may end up getting 60% of what they have now, and that might be a victory. And the ACC's got a contract that's terrible. Nebraska, Colorado, Texas, Oklahoma. I mean, those were their four flagship teams 15 years ago. Yeah. And have none of them now. Or will have none of them. No, I mean, right. it, it would be like going back in time and talking to somebody right now and saying, okay, if the Big Ten loses Penn State, Michigan, I mean, you know, take your top four and wipe yeah. them out. I mean, obviously it's not going to be a stronger pro- uh, platform. Right. So it's like saying there's no Ohio State, no Penn State, no Michigan, yeah. and pick one, no Wisconsin. Yeah, take those four out, right? And, and that's that's what's happened to the Big 12, and I think – I think the Big 12 knows it, hence the lawsuits about Texas and Oklahoma breaking their agreements and leaving. But just for Texas, the problem that they had with Texas was Texas did their own media deal, which really hurt right. the Big 12. And that's something that the U- that USC and UCLA should have done back when yeah. Bill Moose was, you know, pushing everybody in the Pac-12 to, you know, spread the revenue out equally. Because what right. USC and UCLA were doing was they were trying to copy the English Premier League's. Um, Model where they said, look, if you're in the top of the league and you're in the top draws, you make more money. Everybody else is going to get rich on this. But yeah. we're going to be in a situation where more money is going to go to UCLA and USC than does Washington State and Oregon. And Bill Moose fought this tooth and nail when he was at Washington State, and it really hurt the league for it because that's the model that you see with, like, La Liga or with the Bundesliga, where if you look at it, it it's really fascinating. The last place team that doesn't get relegated in the EPL made more money than the Champions League champion made for winning the Champions League. Like, so you created this league like the Big Ten is doing where everybody is super healthy, but you also are recognizing that there's haves and have-nots, and you have to address that. The Pac-12 didn't do that. So George has a lot of weight to carry in renegotiating these deals and understanding that, hey, we've seen how it goes when we're trying to be democratic across all the schools, but it just doesn't work that way, right? It's the same way in the Big Ten. Right, the top teams are the ones driving the national interest. Yes, it's great to see Northwestern come up every now and then. It's great yeah. to see, you know, Sparty, who's, you know, I hate to say little brother, but you know, my family's there, a little bit little brother. Right. But in the end, you're going as far as Michigan, Penn State, Ohio State, Wisconsin are taking you. You're going as right. far as USC and UCLA are taking you, and that's what right. drives national media deals. 
No question. That's what drives it. And Texas, by the way, if I recall correctly, 40% of the TV money was going in the Texas direction. But they're going to find out there's a good reason why, because the next contract's not going to be that way. And the ACC, this isn't Jim Phillips' fault. The ACC has a TV deal where they are stuck. They're stuck until like 2030. Am I wrong there? It's like 2032 or something. 2036. Yeah, it's absurd. (laughs) They're stuck. It's like the Carrier Dome. It's like they signed that deal for like 40 years to have the Carrier name on the Carrier Dome. It's like a Bobby Bonilla contract. It's just awful. Oh, wow. And not only that, when you go in there, they don't have air conditioning. That's not good when it's called Carrier. (laughs) I mean, I did a game. I did a game there in 2008. I'm going. Oh, I'm, I feel like I'm in a roasting pan in here. I said. I thought this place was named after the air conditioning people. It is. I said. It is. Great. And they it and is. it was named after them for another 20 years. And I think they paid like a million bucks for yeah, 20 let's, years. Exactly. They finally let's just bought them out of it. Let's get out of this doggone thing. But, uh, and to, but to me, uh, the Big Ten hit it right because in the end. To me, the NFL, when they went with the Amazon deal, that's what set the tone that it opened up. Because, because you and I both know whomever's going to stream is going to overpay for it. Yeah. I think that yeah. I think that's fair. But are they? We don't know if they're overpaying. We think they might be, right? But maybe they're not, right? Like Jim Delaney, when he did the original deals, right? Remember, we all looked right. at that and thought, this looks really expensive. Yep. Like, are they overpaying for this? And it turns out, no, it was an incredible bargain. So I don't know. That's the only thing I have hesitance on is because you look at deals like this sometimes and you think, hmm, Google bought YouTube for $1.5 billion. That's a lot of money. Turns out it was worth $100. Right? I don't know. I mean, maybe these streaming deals are that valuable. I mean, if there's, if there's people smarter than me in this world, they all work at Amazon and Apple anyways. We know that. Right. So maybe, maybe not. Maybe this is just the Big Ten playing chess when everybody else is playing checkers again. I think this is Amazon and Apple playing chess because yeah. they'll end up they'll end up probably not let this is a pure guess, but like a Northwestern Illinois game or they'll end up with Iowa versus Indiana with the yeah. idea that if they're successful with it the next contract they might be actually the the one that gets the big payoff. Right. That's and, where I think they're playing chess. Yeah, it's it's just one of those things where it's you know, just get in Show success, learn your mistakes. You know, it's okay to make some mistakes on an Illinois Indiana game as opposed yeah. to doing it when, you know, Ohio State's playing Notre Dame. And then you have the infrastructure in place. You've earned the trust. They understand they can give you big packages. And now you're, you're competing with the big boys on it. Well, we're going to find out all this in about two and a half weeks. Yeah. So I'm excited about it. It's, it's just great to have good leadership because it changes the way, it just changes the course of everything so fast. Agreed. And it's incredible to see how much it, ma- it changes, right? It's You look at the formation of the EPL, there were five core teams to that. Everton was one of them. Everton can't right. win anything now. You're gonna, we're going to look back on what you and I are talking about over the last 10 years and say there were five major conferences that were involved in these conversations. And unfortunately, it's the Pac-12 or Big 12 that are going to end up being Everton. The also rans. Right. Exactly. Yes, I mean it's exactly right, and uh, and it's going to be the people that understood the landscape and what it currently is and what it can be are the, going to be the winners. Yeah, it, it's that, incredible to watch. It, it seems so obvious. Obviously, hindsight is twenty twenty, but yeah. it seemed obvious in the moment too when they had that giant right. blow up in the Pac twelve where everybody was fighting. I think anybody from the outside would have looked at this and said, "No, you're obviously a, you know." a media market heavy conference where Stanford, Cal, USC, and UCLA are in the biggest markets by an order of magnitude. We need to give more resources there. The yeah. Big Ten understood that. The SEC understood that. The Pac-12 didn't. Right. The ACC didn't. Right. right? The right. ACC is as top heavy a league as there's ever been. Right? They had oh. three teams that were competitive nationally. And that was it. That's right. Otherwise, yeah. they're a basketball league. And instead yeah. of pouring their resources into those teams, they tried to play the magnanimous, you know, uh, d- Democrat to all of them, the democracy. And what did it do? It weakened the entire league. Free yourself up in two and a half weeks. We'll revisit this conversation when it yeah. comes to fruition. How about that? Yeah, absolutely. Tony, always, always a pleasure, my friend.
Absolutely. Hopefully talk soon. We've got to talk to Cutter World Cup next time. Yeah. The sales yeah, numbers I'm, are crazy. They, they, they I just sold more tickets than Brazil. I know. It's. I, I never that thought possible? that would happen. I never thought it would happen. But to their credit, it has. So we're going to talk about that and about this contract and a lot more. That's why we got to. That's why he, Tony and I have agreed he's got to come on like way more than we've had him on. So I love Tony, it. Let th- me know. Yep, Tony. Thank you, my friend. All right. We'll find you soon.